Hey everyone, it's Alora, and today I am here with my May wrap-up. Now, I know that this is incredibly late to be uploading a May wrap-up, and to be honest, I wasn't even thinking that I was going to film one and upload it, but then I decided, you know what? I read 10 books in the month of May. This deserves to be documented. So here we are. I figured maybe if I combined it with a June TBR, then maybe I could, like, slide it past and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So today, this is my May wrap up and my June TBR. I don't even pretend to know what's going on with the lighting. The problem is that I moved to this apartment that's like a bat cave and there are very few windows <laughs> and it's just so dark and I have lights but they just always blow me out or I don't know, it just looks bad. I'm sorry. Anyway, what can you do? The other thing to note here is that I am sitting on my floor because I thought, you know what? These books down here don't get nearly enough love. I'm always up there with all of the red and blue and green and yellow books and I have more books down here. They're just, you know, black and white and brown and hiding. Anyways, so the first book that I read in the month of May was Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This is a book I'm sure many of you are aware of and it is about this young high school age boy named Simon who starts getting blackmailed when somebody from the school finds out that he's been emailing this other boy and he has a relationship with him. Becky Albertalli has a very unique writing style, it's very funny. So she's created a great character in Simon. He's super sarcastic and really fun to read from. The main theme in this book is identity and finding out who you are, who you want to be, how you want the world to perceive you. And so for that, I think that it was great. Overall though, it wasn't really my cup of tea, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. The second book that I read in the month of May makes me very happy, <laughs> and that is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. I have been attempting to finish this book for nearly a year. It's a thousand pages long, and it's beautiful. It's very lyrical. I love Patrick Rothfuss's writing style, but for some reason it just intimidated me, and I would pick it up for a little bit, and then I would put it down, and then I would be lost, and when I would pick it up again, I just wouldn't know exactly what was going on, so I'd have to go back a little bit, and it just took me four friggin' ever in a day to finish this book, but I finally did, and I really did actually enjoy it, and I ended up giving it a 4.5 or maybe even a 5 stars. Directly after finishing The Wise Man's Fear, I picked up The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss, which is his little novella about one of the side characters in his book series. Her name is Ori. This is a very unique book. And I would say some people might not actually enjoy it, but I loved it, so I ended up giving it a 5 stars. After that, I picked up this book called Almost Adulting by Arden Rose. Arden Rose is a YouTuber, and her book is a guide for getting your act together, essentially, as a young adult. And I expected this to, I don't know, be better than it was. Maybe that sounds really harsh. I didn't enjoy it. I thought that it would be really fun, sort of like Grace's Guide by Grace Helbig, um, but it just didn't do it for me. I, I kind of felt like it fell flat. Maybe the humor just isn't for me, I'm not sure, but I ended up giving this like a 2.5 stars. The next book that I want to talk about is actually something that I listened to from Audible, and that is Quiet by Susan Cain. So this is about the power of introverts in a world that won't stop talking. This was a very enlightening book. I really enjoyed it. I thought that the audiobook narrator was fantastic. She had a very calming, soothing voice, and I just thought that it was really great to learn about this topic because I myself am definitely an introvert if you define an introvert as somebody who gets their energy from being alone, doing solitary activities like reading. Shocker. Anyway, this book was really focused on how our culture prefers extroversion and really almost demeans people who are introverts and instead how we can turn that around and start using this personality trait for good to do great things in the world and to be a positive contributor to our community. So I just thought that this book was great. It also talks about introverted children and how they fit into the education system which I thought was very enlightening so definitely check that out if it sounds interesting to you. The next book that I read was a cookbook. If you know me, you know I love reading through cookbooks, and this one was really great. This was The Plant Power Way by Rich Roll and Julie Piot. This is a power couple, if there ever was one. Rich Roll is in his low 50s, and he does these crazy ultra-marathon, ultra-triathlon 
things. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they're intense endurance races that include running, bicycling, and swimming. Anyway, this is a plant-based cookbook, so it is vegan, but it just, it features so many delectable recipes, and it also has a lot of practical knowledge about eating a primarily vegetable-based diet and how to stay healthy on that, how to perform your best, because Ritual, like I said, is this incredible athlete, and he, he does that all while being vegan. So I would definitely recommend checking this cookbook out if you want some beautiful, beautiful new recipes. After that, apparently I was on a cookbook roll because I read Raw Vegan, Not Gross by Laura Miller. She is a fantastic woman. She does YouTube videos. She used to do them on Taste Made, and then she had her own channel. She still has her channel. And on her channel, she does raw vegan recipes, and she also does these kind of social not really social commentaries, but talking about topics such as anxiety, friendships, relationships, things like that. And she just has very great down-to-earth advice, and she's very funny, and I just, I really enjoy watching her, so I wanted to pick up her cookbook. And I enjoyed it. I thought that there were a lot of great recipes, and those look yummy. A lot of her recipes were very simplistic, but I did really appreciate how she wove her humor into the cookbook. Um, overall, it wasn't my favorite plant-based cookbook that I've ever read, but I did still enjoy it because of her personality, so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. After that, I finally finished How to Live a Good Life by Jonathan Fields. This is kind of a self-empowerment type book that, that you are supposed to complete over the course of a month. So you do one little chapter per day, and each chapter is a different lesson. The idea behind this book is that you are supposed to be filling up your three different buckets in life. So you have your vitality bucket, you have your community bucket and you have your contribution bucket. So there were 10 lessons in each category of this book. I really actually enjoyed it. There were a lot of practical little guide guides, tips. There were practical tips in here. It wasn't the best self-help book that I've ever read, but I enjoyed it. I gave it, I think I gave it a four out of five stars. It was good. It was definitely worth my time to read. Next comes my favorite book of the month and that was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I had never actually read a full-length Lainey Taylor novel before. I had read a short story that she had written in the My True Love Gives to Me Christmas collection a few years back and I had loved her lyrical, fantastical writing style. It's just so rich and incredible and then this book just blew my mind because she took that writing style she had a fantastic storyline she had these great characters but she also included serious topics such as hatred that runs through generations and it's hard to explain i think you just have to read it i gave this one definitely a five out of five stars and i'm so thrilled that it's actually going to be a series and not just a standalone book so i'm looking forward to reading the next one when it eventually comes out and finally, the last book that I read in the month of May was The Raven's Gift by Don Reardon. This is a book that's actually set in Alaska, written by an Alaskan author. This is a very famous book in Alaska, and Don Reardon, Reardon actually teaches at the university which I attend, so I'm glad that I got to read this. This is a book about a young teacher named John who moves to a remote Alaskan village with his wife, Anna. Kind of hard to explain, but there are three timelines that intertwine throughout this story, and it's a tale of resilience and perseverance and love and loss and the human spirit and all of those really important kind of lofty topics. Um, I really thought that it was quite good. I didn't love it. I didn't really enjoy my time spent reading it but I thought that it was very well put together, so I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. So those are all of the books that I read in the month of May. There were 10 of them. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, I did have a couple of weeks off between the spring semester and the summer semester, so I had a little bit of time to cram in all of that reading. But now, I am in the thick of this 7-10 to 10 week long summer semester, taking 16 credits, dying over here, but I still am ambitious with my reading goals, so I'm going to tell you about the books that I'm hoping to read in June. The first one, because the day that I'm filming this is June 10th, so <laughs> we've already made it through a significant chunk of the month. The first book that I actually read was Amy and Rogers' Epic Detour, so this is the first book on my TBR. Pretty sure everybody knows what that one's about, Morgan Matson's most famous book. It's about this road trip with two people, it's a love story, yada yada. After that, I'm planning on reading Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. 
This is a thriller sci-fi novel that's also a romance, it's really interesting, and I'll talk about it more in my June wrap-up, which will actually be coming around here pretty quickly since we're nearly halfway through the month. But anyway, it's next on my TBR. I already read it. Now I want to talk about a couple of books that I'm in the middle of reading. So the first one is a book that I was planning on finishing in the month of May, but I just didn't get around to it. I don't know why. It's A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. I've been listening to this on audiobook. It's like a 25 hour long audiobook or something insane. So it's taking me quite a long time. I'm probably two thirds of the way through. So I feel fairly confident that I should be able to finish in June. I don't want to talk about it yet until I have completely finished the story. So far I am really enjoying it. I am also still in the midst of reading Unaccustomed Earth by Jhumpa Lahiri. Probably mispronouncing her name, I'm sorry. I am. This is a collection of short stories by the author Jhumpa Lahiri who has won the Pulitzer Prize. So she is a very venerated author. There are a total of eight short stories in this collection and I have so far read five of them so I'm more than halfway through. Um, they're mostly about the complexities of family dynamics and relationships. They're about immigration and living in a new land, an accustomed earth, and they're just, they're very fascinating, so I am looking forward to talking about it at the end of this month. I am also in the middle of rereading Mastering Your Mean Girl, The No BS Guide to Silencing Your Inner Critic and Becoming Wildly Wealthy, Fabulously Healthy, and Bursting with Love. This is a woman-focused self-empowerment book that I've read before and it's actually my favorite one. So I decided that I wanted a little bit of a boost and I wanted to reread it. So I'm actually kind of reading it in tandem with listening to it on audiobook. I got the audiobook so that I could be doing dishes and laundry and stuff while I'm making my way through this one again. The next book that I'm planning to read is one that I will read, I have to read because I have an assignment due, I have to write an essay on it, and that is I Dare to Say, African Women Share Their Stories of Hope and Survival. I don't really know anything about this book other than what I just said and what the cover looks like, so it seems fairly self-evident the word I was looking for. Next book that I'm thinking about picking up is The Circle by Dave Eggers. This book actually hasn't received very much praise but it's being turned into a movie with Emma Watson and I adore Emma Watson so I wanted to read the book and I'm actually reading it with somebody so that will be fun. Finally I'm going to talk about two more books really quickly here um, because I'm not sure, I don't think I'll have time to get to both of them but I don't really know which one I'm going to want to read. They're kind of similar, but they're also kind of opposite, so just let me explain here. The first one is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. Now, I watched the movie, which was made by Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki, and I really loved it. I just, uh, I really loved it. So I wanted to read the book um, and see if the book is just as fun and enjoyable and uh, enchanting? That's the right word. See if it's as enchanting as the film was. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be in the mood for this one or if I'm going to be in the mood for Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This is also a fantasy but it's obviously a little bit darker if you see like blood dripping down the knife there. It looks a little bit more serious and dripping out of her eye socket. Wow, yeah, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> might, might be a little much for me, I guess we'll see. But I'm like I said, I don't really know what I'll be in the mood for, but I'll probably get to one of those books also. So, thank you guys for sticking with me through this long video with me sitting on the floor in kind of blue light. I am really happy to be back filming again. I know it's kind of sporadic, that's just my life right now. But thank you guys for watching. I hope that you're having a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And until next time, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye guys.